So this seminar, this webinar is being recorded. We will post it and uh, it will allow you to look again at the content in case something may go too quickly. So don't worry, I'll try to proceed relatively slowly, but in case you miss anything, you'll still be able to look at the recording. Hmm? So the idea of this uh, webinar is, as explained in the introduction, is to give you an idea on the concept, how we were thinking, and what is the whole idea of this new generation of homeopathic software. And of course, I will show you a number of uh, buttons and uh, little things how to do what. But along, I will give you what is currently possible and what will be possible because of these features. And my intention is, on one side, to give you an introduction to the program, and on the other side, to do it in such a way that you understand what we intended, and that you'll be able to explore and use the program in all its aspects after this session. Okay? And in order to do that, I will start with what I call the key knowledge. These five items that are key to know, most important to know, to use the program. We'll quickly show a case and run it through the vest if we have time. And probably, I must say, we won't have the time to do the key tools, but we may come back to a second session with explanation on the key tools and with replies to your most important questions that Phil is writing down and we're taking a very uh, precise record of those. So don't hesitate to write us any questions in the question box below your screen. All right? So the key knowledge, the first feature is the easiest, is that like any program, Radar Opus, uses a menu and hotkeys and icons to access it. When you open uh, Radar Opus, it may look pretty much like this. First of all, let me tell you, if it looks different, that is very possible, because Radar Opus is built to be a very flexible program, where different people can do things in different ways, where different people can display information in different ways. I'll come to that in a minute. But to start, don't worry if your screen, the one you're used to, looks different. Okay? Let me just go through a number of steps and I'll address these possibilities of differences. So coming back to my first point, this program, as all of them, has a menu, which you see up here, and where you see the different possibilities, for example, to take information. To the right side of many of those items, you see letters, figures, signs that can be used and that are the hotkeys. So, when I want to take a symptom, I can do it through the menu and the mouse. You see here, I am on Take with Intensity 3. When I click here, the symptom that is current, which is uh, here, let me show you this, yeah, which is here, the symptom morning, okay, the finger indicates the symptom morning. When I am here, got to go back to my regular mouse. When I am here at take with the mouse, I can take the symptom morning. And it will appear here in the clipboard, the symptom clipboard. So the hotkey for, you should be aware, I go to next symptom. The hotkey means you can do the same, like by typing, plus three. You see the plus three? Obviously, you cannot see that I type, 
But the first symptom I took with the mouse, the second symptom I take with the keyboard. And mind forenoon, to take it with the keyboard, I type plus three. Enter. So this is to say that in the menu, you have the information to use the program by the keyboard or by the mouse. Some people have preferences for the one or the other. Some people who can type a little prefer the keyboard all the time. It has been our idea to make the program just as the old radar, in fact, as much accessible for keyboard users and for mouse users. So that's about the menu and the hotkeys. Okay. Now, then the icons, as in other programs as well, you see this bar, this horizontal bar of icons, where I, uh, that I show here, yeah, the horizontal bar of icons. These icons indicate the main functions of the program. First, I'll explain them quickly, then I'll show you some detail. These five icons belong together. They are the repertories, references, which is all the books except the repertories, the patients, information on remedies, and information on families. These are the five entries to the program. With these five icons, you can go anywhere. Then you have three search icons, the search area, the search icon, and the search box. Then you have here a number of icons that allow you to go to a certain place, a bookmark, to go back or to go forward, or to go to any place in the history. This will allow you to trace back a previous symptom you've looked at, like five symptoms ago, very quickly. We'll show it later. This is the analysis icon. These are the maps. We'll come to that. Zoom in, zoom out. Printer icon, screenshot, and the general help. Now, the first thing, these icons are not too many yet they will cover very many possibilities. I'll give you one example. When you look at the print icon, you see that to the right side of the print icon there is a little arrow. You see the little arrow here? Well, it means you can either click on the print icon to print whatever you're looking at, or you can click on the little arrow and then a menu opens and it shows that the icon is hiding different possibilities. And you can immediately decide to print either in a portrait mode or in a landscape mode. Yeah. Likewise for the screenshot, yeah, you can click on the icon as I just did to have the screenshot. Or you can here, next to the screenshot, decide which type of screenshot you take. Also in the analysis, you see, immediately you have different types of analysis that you, from which you can choose. So be aware that at the icons, you have the access to very often used functions, like analyzing the case, opening in Materia Medica, but you also have menus next to the icons with an arrow, so again you can go more quickly to a certain uh, function that you would like to execute. That's another idea. As little clicks as possible to go anywhere, from anywhere to anywhere else. Hmm? So this is the first, uh, the first step, the menu, the hotkeys and the icons. It is, let's say, the most common part, but still important to explain with some precision. Now, the second part are the TOC, Table of Content Icons. And that is specific for our program, as specific for homeopathy. You will remember that the idea was to create one program 
where basically a homeopath could do everything he would like to do. And of course, most common homeopaths will use repertories, which is the first table of content icon. These are the one, two, three, four, five table of content icons. So if you go to repertory and you would like to open one, you get a list here and you can type, you can click on Verike and Verike's repertory opens here in addition to synthesis. Hmm. So uh, this is probably one of the most common things someone is doing and then as in radar Again, the only thing you need to do to find a symptom is type the first letters like M, I. You see here the, the M, I that I am typing. Wait a minute, let me magnify it. You see here M, I. This indicates the letters I am typing. Okay? So I, I hit enter now. I go to the chapter Minds and I type uh, this discontented. Voila. And I am at a symptom. Okay? As in the old program, you cannot only use the menu to take a symptom, you cannot only use the hotkey, but you can also just drag the symptom to the clipboard. Yeah. Drag means click left, hold down and release only here. Yeah. Click and drag the symptom onto the clipboard. Now that is uh, repertorization. Okay, repertory. We can speak more about it later. But another task a homeopath would like to do is to study Materia Medica. And we see here, for example, uh, some remedy we don't know about, well, if we click on this icon, the references icon, all books except repertories, we see the list of Materia Medicas. Now that list is very long, 1427 documents are present here in different languages, as you can see, I have sorted the English one first, then the French one, the Italian one, the Spanish ones, the German ones, etc. Again, comparative and so on. Mm -hmm. And there is an easy way to get quicker to the document you like. That is by typing, for example, here, hail eh, or Kent. And you see all the books that are uh, by Kent or where Kent appears in the title. Okay. Look here, Gaskin. Mm. This is not Kent. This is a comparative study of Kent's Materia Medica by Gaskin. Okay. So whatever word you write here trims down the list and you find more easily what you like to find. The same applies here. If you like to find Kent's repertory, to do the same, you just type Kent here in the box next to repertories. So the table of content icon for repertories is when you want to start to work with repertory. Here is when you like to start looking into Materia Medica. The same idea, lecture on homeopathic Materia Medica, you like to read, you click on it and it will open here at the right side. The table of content icon is also uh, an expression of another idea we have in the program and that is the, uh, uh, the idea that uh, because we are managing a lot of information we use the approach of a website which is basically left the menu and in the middle or to the right the content as on a website okay the website the menu may be on the top but you understand the idea one part of the screen is the menu 
the other side of the screen is the content. And as you move here in the table of contents, yeah, you see that different content opens in the main side, the right side. Yeah? Another reason why we work with the table of contents at the left and content at the right is when we search. Yeah? When we search, then you can search in repertory and Materia Medica at the same time. Yeah? So I will show you this for the moment. You, to search, you click on the search icon. You see the icon here at the top, the magnifying glass. And as I search, uh, let's say, uh, for the word brother, okay, I just type brother, I hit enter. And I search now in open repertories only, as is indicated in this little space here which we call the search area. And this is the area where we search. The open repertory is synthesis, so the search result comes from synthesis. Now, one of the advantages is that this program is not only repertory but also Materia Medica references and instead of searching in open repertories or even all repertories we can choose to search in all references. So I change my search area. To get there, you click on this button. You see that button being highlighted. You get a list and you go to, for example, search in open references, which are the lectures by Kent. And there I get no results, okay. That's not a problem. Let's then look in all the references, okay, for the word brother. And I see them appear here. Alan is the first one, yeah? Anschutz, etc., etc. And now you see again this idea of the content on the right side and the table of contents on the left side, where the table of contents on the left side has, is now presenting the search result. Yeah? So, brother, in all references, what you have been, uh, what you have been uh, looking for, yeah? brother in all references, now search in all these Materia Medica shows you with this the text which contains the word brother. Yeah? So, the table of content is also used to display the search result. Okay. Now, we know some people eh, were not used to this and some people say, well, I'm not searching, I just want to have most of my screen to read this Materia Medica. Let's say you like to read this Materia Medica. Well, there is a number of ways to make your screen then look again like the old radar NEH, which means full screen size, and that is by double clicking on the tab here. Do you see that above the screen I have a tab? This screen continues into this tab. Do you see this from the color? It continues into this tab. These are different tabs. Okay? They are gray. The active tab is blue or the same color as the screen to which it is related. And so I can go to this tab with the point of my arrow and when I click double on it then the table of content disappears and I have all the space I can imagine to read my text or to read my repertory or to read my analysis whatever I like to do. So this is a little useful hint that to show or hide the table of contents, you can double click on the tab you like to see. So, as I am now looking at the screen full size, and I double click on the search tab, which is here, now the table of contents appears again, and I could decide I like to go to Herskew and to see what he has to say about Brother. 
Okay? Table of contents helps me to move in the contents. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the idea of the table of content icons. So we have the repertories, we have the Materia Medica, and then we have, of course, the patient file. Mm -hmm. When I click on the patient file, I have the same list, I mean, same idea of a list of patients. The names are hidden here, but in order to find my patients, I can just type some letters and I will see the patients with these letters in their name or last name. Okay? Then the fourth icon here is remedies. And when I click on it, I will see a list of all the remedies. Hmm? And uh, I can choose, for example, all the phosphorus all the phosphorus remedies, you see, phosphorica, phosphoricum, etc. Where you see that the phosphoricum, phosphorica is in the second part of the word. You see, all the salts appear. Okay? Or when you say natrum, you see here the natrum salts. Natrium shows you even more, eh? because the Latin is natrium, all right? And then from here, let's go back, just make a little uh, jump. Eh? From here, again, from this table of content, everything is active. Eh? Wherever you are in the program, be aware that there is probably some possibility to very quickly go to where you like to be. Let's say I look at this remedy here, uh, Abies Balsamea, okay? And uh, I click on it, and it will show the information of this remedy, which appears, as you can expect, in the right side. So this is the passport information, a project we did with Franz von Merlin, where he indicates the uh, surrounding information, and not so much the homeopathic symptoms, but any other type of information, like synonyms, the native range, where the plant is living, which type of soil it needs, then uh, some botanical information, economical information, medicinal information, chemical information, etc. Mm? So from the table of contents, I go here. Mm? Or, I can click right, I can click right on the name of the remedy and search for this remedy in, for example, the open repertory. Or in the open references. Or when I go down, I can just go to the Google Images. You see Google Images here? I click on this button. And as I'm connected to the Internet, you have to be connected to the Internet for this, then this will open Google for me and show me the images of that remedy. Okay? Um, so the table of contents of the families is the last one, where again you can type to find... Uh, a family, and it is interesting, because as I type L-O-G-A-N, I'm interested to finding Logania Sea, I see that in our program we have five different sources yeah, for this family. And I just click here once on the Lohan Isea. According to Shankaran's scheme, I see the remedies. If I'm interested to see the Logan Isea, Along the APG2 scheme, I see the remedies. Or Dalegren, I see the remedies. Okay? So, find this information in the table of contents and get back the contents in the right side. Now, again, a little hint. Uh, here, as well, it's always the same. 
click with the mouse with the right button of the mouse on a family and a menu pops up. Hmm? So you see these remedies here, Jalsamium, Ignatian, Luxuma, Cast, Pygeria, etc. And I can use this now in the menu to limit my current analysis to this family. Okay? You remember I took three symptoms at random in the clipboard and now I can limit that analysis to this family. I'm in the family, I click on it, and I see just Nuxfomica, Ignatia, and Gelsemium, which are the remedies of the Dahlgren family. I cannot read very well the symptoms, so I like to expand this content on the whole width of the screen. You remember what I need to do? I click here on the tab of analysis. Double click. Left. And so I see now very easily the whole symptom here, morning forum discontented with the three remedies of uh, the Loganiacea. All right. So this is the table of contents and I've explained to you already a little bit about the double click on the tab. Let me draw your attention a little more to those tabs. This is very important for you to be aware that when you open a repertory, it remains open. When you open a Materia Medica, it remains open. When you open a patient, it remains open. When you open a keynote on a Materia Medica, on a keynote or on a remedy, it remains open. You see, all these windows, they remain open. Because the idea is like a very big desk, you can jump from your repertory to your material medical to your patient in all directions eh? and to uh, organize possibly a lot of different information we have created these steps eh? so these steps are here you see this is a tab which goes to the web uh, access this is a tab which goes to the repertory of families this is a tab which goes to the Materia Medica of Dunham. This is a tab with explanation on the remedy and this is the analysis tab. Okay? Now, first of all, in order to net, not get a complete mess, we, the program automatically will sort documents of the same type together. This means, if this is a repertory, you recognize the icon repertory here in the tab, eh, the same icon. Then here is a little arrow, a little triangle, I'm sorry, a little triangle, you see it? And when I approach it, when I click on it, it will open all the repertories that are open. And will allow me to switch immediately to synthesis again. You see? I click on synthesis, I'm back in synthesis at this content. Okay? Or if I am at the Materia Medica tab, which is here, I see again the little triangle which tells me I have already opened two Materia Medicas and I can switch again to Ken's lectures if I would like so. Okay. Or if I would like to see the analysis, I can click on this tab. I see the analysis. My website is there. Okay. And like this, I can go very quickly from repertory to Materia Medica, to my search window even, to change the search and so on and so on. Also now, we are back in the mode where the table of content is displayed. And be aware that all the tabs are resized here. You see them at the right side, but the functioning is the same. You see the little triangle with the different possibilities. And you see that the main screen, which is present here, continues into one tab, which is the active one. Mm -hmm. So, this is important for you to remember, to not get lost. If you are working in the repertory and you say, oh, I'm finding another symptom, I am uh, going to grumbling, I'm grumbling because I don't find my uh, Materia Medica anymore, where do I need to look? Think of the tabs. Don't need to go here 
These are the table of contents icons which will help you to open other information like other Materia Medicas. But if you have opened the Materia Medica already, it will be under the tabs. So you understand the difference between the table of content icons on one side and the tabs with all the documents that are open and have been used or being used by you at the other side. Okay? So the idea is a lot of information can be available at your fingertips, very easily and quickly reachable. Okay? Then the other element I'd like to emphasize and give you a few examples is the importance of the mouse. Now the mouse has uh, basically three possibilities. You can click on the left button, you can click on the right button and you can do a mouse over. Now a mouse over means that you go to certain information without clicking. Look here, I see in the repertory screen that grunting has a number of remedies. Uh, wait for this, let me just change the view so I can show this to you. That grunting has uh, three remedies, no, four remedies here, Belladonna, Helleborus, Ignatia, you see them? And these four remedies, they belong to the view repertory of Kent with provings. Okay? Now, two remedies are not included in this view, but they are part of the full view. Without changing the view, I can see those two remedies by moving the mouse over the figure 2. I hope it stays long enough for the transmission to capture it but normally you should see a little window pop up with the remedies Maxi and Sepia, which are the two remedies that are hidden, okay? Or if I see all these icons and I don't know what they mean, I can go here and see that this icons means this modality night is a time modality. Okay? This modality sleep during is a regular modality in the narrow way of finding. So the mouse over. Okay? Now, uh, let's go back here to, uh, to the remedies. Okay? So, uh, we go for another remedy, Abias Nigra. And I will now here click right, you see, and then say search for the remedy in the open repertories. Okay. We were just uh, looking at the repertory. We could also have been looking at Materia Medica. What happens if I say this? Search Abias Nigra in all open repertories. Well, all open repertories, they are basically Burica and Synthesis. And it will extract straight away Abias Nigra, the remedy Abias Nigra here in Burica. Or, if I click on this one, I will see the search results in synthesis. Okay? And this I can do anywhere. Okay? So even when I am here reading Ken's lectures, and uh, I am reading and reading and reading, and as Ken uh, sometimes does, uh, he speaks suddenly about spongia. You see this? Spongia is remedy information. How will I go as quickly as possible from this Materia Medica to knowing more about Sponja, it is by going to the table of contents icon remedies. Okay? And there I type Sponja and I have a number of possibilities to do. I can click right and I can search this remedy in all references, books without repertories, but even to a certain type. Okay? And I can say, can I find anything about provings for Sponja? Okay, you see that? I click left, and now from my repertory extraction, I am now, within one second, searching in my Materia Medica in the provings, only provings. And obviously, Alan appears with the encyclopedia with all the provings. 
Alan appears again with the summary of the handbook. Bradford, with his index of probings, will tell me straight away whether the different authors in journals where, public, where probings of sponja have been uh, published. I see Hahnemann, I see Hughes, I see Larry, who apparently has published some proving information on the remedy. And so immediately I am exactly where I like to be. Now I go back to my analysis to reflect whether this can be the remedy and so on and so on. You begin to see the flexibility of the program. Hmm? Uh, let me see, uh, was there another thing here? Uh, go back to my presentation. Yes, so remember the right to use the right mouse. Yes, the fifth item, the fifth item, which will help you a lot to, to do what you would like to do with the program is the options icon. Every screen has options. And let me go back here to the references. You see, I am set up in such a way that I see English and French and Italian and Spanish and German books. Now, maybe some of you, they would like to see only the Spanish books. Let's take this. Well, that is an option. And it is an option of this screen. Now, every screen's options are hidden between these two arrows. You see them here. And you see those... Oh, wait a minute. A little mistake. You see them here. And you see them also... Okay, so, the two arrows. Okay. And you see them also here. Okay. Every screen's options are hidden behind this icon. What happens if I click on this icon? It shows additional information with really a lot of possibilities already. It's, I must say, if you start doing this, you will be amazed of how much work we have already done in this Radar Opus program. So, for example, I can decide to display or not the language flag. You see? Do you see it disappear here? No language flag. Okay? I can decide it. Or, to come back to the example I was going to give, I can choose which languages to select. If you, all the time, most of the time, you work in only Spanish or only French or only English, you can deselect all the languages and then say Spanish. And you will see the result only in Spanish. If you erase Kent, here, you will see even more books in Spanish. Or if you say, give me Spanish and English, any combination you can do. Also, you can decide on the sorting yourself. You see, in different ways. Uh, you can change the displays in many ways. And that possibility for options goes in almost any window. Yeah, like here, the display. Uh, of the analysis screen. The two arrows are here. You see that? Mm -hmm. And then you can say uh, add a shadow to the waffle. Okay? You see the shadow appear and disappear? It's here. This is the waffle. Okay. You like to see it more clearly. You can add the shadow or remove the shadow. So please be welcome on any screen to play with those options and fine-tune the way the program looks and functions for your own best uh, sake. Okay? So these are the five main ideas. If you remember these, you'll be able to go along in any screen. In the menu, look at the hotkeys. You can use the keyboard. Look at the icons, also the icons with the menu. Then be aware, there are five types of table of content icons to access the different types of information we may use while practicing. All open documents are collected under tabs. Okay. The tabs here, remember to look at those tabs and you will find back the different documents and screens you have opened. Double click on the tab to go white screen and a table of contents visible or not. Wherever you are, 
use the mouse on the left. Check whether there is a possibility when you click with the right side of the mouse and also when you do a mouse over, be careful, something may pop up. Okay? And then the options of the screen with the two arrows on many places, they will also allow you to fine-tune the program exactly the way you like. Mm -hmm. So, this is, let's say, the building blocks. Eh? There's bricks, there's windows, there's trees around the house, uh, there's staircases, staircases. And so, if you have these ideas, I feel you can visit the house and use the house in any possible way. Now, uh, before, Phil, are you listening? Yes. Okay, so I will now quickly show a relationship between radar, the old radar, and the radar opus now to show you how we did the work, and then we'll have some more time to address some questions. So if you can prepare some questions that people have been asking, uh, you're welcome uh, to tell them after this little last note that I give. Right? So I go back now to the old radar. And this is the old radar screen where I have prepared a case with 16 symptoms, as you can see. Uh, this case is a case with a person with some mental problems, discontented, irritability, forgetful irresolution. You can read the symptoms but also with a problem of facial neuralgia, neuralgic pain in the face. As you can see from the symptoms 10 to 15 in this list. Now, this case is a little bit a uh, special case, an interesting case, because it was the, uh, was it the first or, uh, no, it was the third case that we analyzed as a test when George came to test the Vitulka's expert system in 1988. Right? And the challenge of this case was to choose between, let's say, the remedy that appears and seems to cover most of the symptoms or the remedy that goes along most well with the more local symptoms. Right? How has the decision to be made? If you do the analysis, as I show you now, you see Nuxomica, Sulfur, China, Graphitis and so on coming up as main remedies covering not only the mental symptoms but also several of the local symptoms. And the challenge is, does it have to be Nuxomica, Sulfur, etc. or does it have to be a small remedy which is covering more, more especially the local symptoms? Okay. So, from the flat repertorization at which you are looking now, you can reflect about all these remedies, read the Materia Medica and so on and so on. We will not do this. But, you know, we have programmed the VES with George, which does this calculation in a number of ways within one second, very fast. Eh? And which is uh, looking at the symptoms at the remedies, at the size of the rubrics, the opponents of the symptoms, at the keynotes, at the underlining, and so on and so on. And you know, you see here, uh, if I scroll down a little bit, you see here the underlining at the right side, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2 etc. You see the underlining, okay? And that is by just clicking on the Vitulka's expert system icon, which is up here, okay? And this calculation is done then immediately and you see, bang, one remedy comes up, one remedy shows and that is verbascom. If we look at the graphical representation of the result, we see that the probability for verbascom is like two to three times more than Nux Vomica, which is the next runner up. So a very drastic decision, so to say, suggestion for sure, by the VES on this case. Okay? And when we analyzed the case with the computer in 1988, this was the expectation of George, the required reply, the desired remedy was verbascum, and this was also what the VES suggested at that time. Hmm? Now, we have been uh, 
redesigning the vest, reprogramming the vest from scratch again in uh, this program where I will now recall the uh, vest analysis. When I recall, I just type Control R. Yeah? I get immediately to my window to recall repertory uh, analysis. I get this little window which is telling me your current analysis has not been saved. These are the five symptoms I used as a test. You want to save it or not? No, I don't want to save it. Okay, so don't be worried to lose information. The program knows whether you have saved or not. So I say this time I don't save this information and I get to my recall an analysis window where I type the name of this uh, analysis and I can recall it. Hmm? So when I recall it, I see immediately here the vest screen where you may recognize the same symptoms. Eh? Do you see discontented, irritability, confidence, dull, forgetful, irritable morning? 10 to 15, you see the symptoms face, pain, left, pain, afternoon, and you see the same remedies, sulfur, noxomica, phosphorus, pulsatilla, and so on. If you like to look one more time at radar, here at the result. Ah, yes, there is a different analysis maybe. So this is the sum of symptoms here. And then let's go here. Voilà. Sulfur, noxomica, lycopodium, etc. The same remedies come up. Hmm? And we have programmed like in Radar, in Radar Opus, we have reprogrammed the VEST as well, and it's the same way under Analysis. Now I like to do an analysis. I go to the icon Analysis. I don't click on the icon because I know I want to go one step further already. I click here on the little arrow next to the icon, and then I can choose straight away the Vitulka's expert system to analyze my information. Or, you see at the right hand side, the hotkey, if I like to use the keyboard only, Shift F9. Okay? So I click here, I do Shift F9, and I see the results of the VES now within Radar Opus, and it shows me also Verbascum Album. Okay? Immediately with the graphic uh, display, where I see that just as in Radar, the probability for verbascum is two to three times more than nux vomica. Hmm? So we see that, uh, in fact, the uh, VES has been programmed, uh, the very difficult and elaborate calculation of the VES has been uh, reprogrammed in uh, a radar opus, so that is completely compatible and the same as the VES in uh, radar. Okay? So this is uh, a little introduction. Oh yes, let me just show you. Now again, again, eh, just to come back how with these five ideas you can use any screen of the program. Suppose this is the first time you see this screen. Eh? Well, I told you, eh, you can you click right. Eh? Click right on this remedy. You see, on verbascum. I don't know about this remedy. Okay? I click right and I can hear say, okay, uh, what shall I do? Show me the extraction. And from the vest, I go and I say, show me the extraction of Verbascum in Berike or in the Stroyens. You see, immediately from the vest result, the next in one step, I have the extraction from the repertory. And, and if I look at the tabs here, I can go back in one step to look for another remedy I don't know, which is the Carbonium Sulfuricum, and then I say, oh, this remedy I don't know at all, uh, is it a salt? I like to see a Wikipedia explanation on it. Within one click, I am here at uh, Wikipedia, who says that the information is under Carbonium Sulfuratum, Sulfuratus, okay, something coming up, nothing coming up, okay, then I go back uh, to my VES screen 
where I can ask to look for this remedy under Google. If someone is speaking about it in Google, and yes, of course, then I find in the homeopathic website, homeohint, homeopathy and more, I will find information on carbonium sulfuratum as much as I like, and I can move on in this website uh, just as if I am browsing a, with a web browser. Hmm? Now, remember, you're not seeing a web browser because you're seeing here at the left side and the upper side, you're seeing Radar Opus. So Radar Opus is browsing the internet. Eh? One program does it all. And let me come back to what I was telling to you in the beginning. You can click here on the history and you will see that certain uh, places have been kept. You see that? So if I like to go, to go back to Grumbling which is a rubric I was looking at 15 steps ago, I click here and in one step from my website, eh, where I click three, four times, I am back in the repertory at the rubric grumbling. Eh? This is the idea of these buttons, bookmark, go back, go forward, and history. Okay? So, Phil, give me some idea what else people would like to know. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't have any outstanding questions generally. I, what one question I have is that screen you're looking at right now, where it says grumbling and then yes. four, and then in brackets plus sixteen. Yes. What what options have you got selected to get that screen? This is uh, a screen where the Kent plus proofings is selected as a repertory view. So repertory view downsizes your repertory from full synthesis to Kent or anything in between. If yeah. let me start from the beginning. If I look at the full repertory, you see that I select a full repertory now. Okay, yeah. I will see twenty remedies because all authors are there. Okay, mm -hmm. but if I downsize synthesis to like, let's say, uh, Ken plus Vitulkas. Oh, that's not a good rubric for that. Let's go to Lamenting, maybe. Yes. Then I see I have, within the Ken plus Vitulkas view, I have 84 remedies, but not the ones which are belonging to the views that are larger, larger than the Ken plus Vitulkas view. And those 25 are here indicated between brackets, and I can even see them if I do a mouse over on the 25. Okay? Just, yeah, just let me get that screen up on mine because... Um, okay, so that, that plus 25, what do you have to select to show that in the option? Ah, to show it, to show it. This, uh, this is here, wait a minute. Uh, Uh, show the remedies. Uh, no, no, it is with these icons. I'm sorry, it will be with these icons. You see? You see this icon here? Hang on one sec, I'm just going to with a plus. Mine back to yours. This icon with the plus yes. says also displays remedies excluded from the view. If oh, I okay. click on it, I see the 25 appear. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to see it, I even don't want to be reminded that there is 25 more uh, remedies, then I uh, make it inactive, and so the 25 don't show. It's with this icon here, okay? Okay, do you usually have that setting when you're working? I usually have the setting with the 25, or so to remind me this rubric has more remedies in a more expanded yeah. okay. view. I, even if I don't use them, I find it interesting to be aware that there are more possibilities. Okay? So, uh, are there any people who like to write questions? Please go ahead. Uh, we have some time for a few questions. Or would you like that I open up the... Uh, the uh, I mean, we are, by now, we are with uh, quite a few people, so... 
Somebody, uh, so I have a couple more questions now. Yes, please. Uh, okay, so uh, somebody is saying, what is the VEST principle? The VEST principle. The yeah, VEST sure. principle yeah. is, uh, we can speak a long time about it, but very short, VEST analyzes the information, basically symptoms, remedies and underlining from different angles and makes a probability calculation from these different angles we know yeah, as homeopaths into one probability score. The different angles I have given some examples like do the mental symptoms match? Do the keynotes match? Uh, maybe it's a remedy because it's a small remedy. Maybe it's a remedy because it covers most of the symptoms. So all these different angles are together into one probability calculation and so comes up with one suggestion. This is the rest. Okay, I have some more questions. So this is from Jeff F. Yes, um, Jeff. He, he joined us late and he's saying, how can I search all documents to get a result with all remedies that have a symptom as well as the book excerpt? Search all documents to have a result. So we go to the search screen. The search screen, you go through this icon, then you arrive at this screen. I will now enlarge it to the width of the screen. I like to use the one with the four boxes. You see, you here have a choice between one box, which you see now, or the four boxes, which you see now. Yeah? So suppose you are interested in the remedy Bellis Perennis, okay? Bellis Perennis is the remedy you like. And so Jeff is asking, I would like to search that remedy everywhere. Yes. If I click now on the search, it will search only in the open repertories. But Jeff says, no, I want to search everywhere at the same time. It is just another option here in the menu. And you can look in all repertories all Materia Medicas at the same time. Later, you will be able to search in all your patients at the same time and eventually in all repertories Materia Medica and patient information at the same time. For the moment I can show you if you click here on all documents, this includes all types of documents, within a second it finds you in all these different repertories information on Bellis Perennis. You can decide where to go Apparently, Quisling has a lot of information on the remedy. Uh, you can move down. You see Anschutz, this is Materia Medica. You can see there is information on the families of the remedy and so on. There is therapeutics with Bellis Perennis, among others, the way. There are provings which you find here. There is cases in the journals, probably. And immediately, you see all the information everywhere on the remedy. If you select here, the search area to be all documents. That's the reply, Jeff. Okay? Search area should be all documents and the program will search wherever you like. Another okay, question, Phil? Yeah, I've got a question about Radar 10 here. Uh, yes. From Krista and Peng. In Radar 10, when I double click on the remedy in the repertory, it can show the source of the remedy. Source of the remedy, yes. How can I open this in Opus? So we go here to uh, the repertory. Now I don't know what you mean by source, because source may mean two things. Eh? Source may mean the author. Eh? And here is a little icon, which if I click on it, will show the author for the different remedies. Okay, that's one level of source. Now the second level of a source to which Krishna may be referring is the text of the Materia Medica. So when, when I am here at Aurum, hmm, lamenting Aurum, I would like to click here somewhere and go to the Materia Medica not only to read about Aurum, but to read about the lamenting of Aurum. Hmm. We have started to do this info, to collect such information in synthesis. Uh, and that is visible in radar already. That has not yet been implemented, but it is ready to be there. Eh? So, uh, wait a minute. Uh, how can I change? 
no. Uh, I have to show it from Materia Medica, I think. Let me go down a little bit. Uh, maybe here. Yes. Um, yes. Voila. You see, this is already in the menu eh, that we can link uh, this record, it means this Materia Medica symptom, to a record, to a record in the repertory. Okay? So, this is a part, that, this, is, we, this is a part of the editing tools. Eh? It's one of the major parts that is not yet ready within Radar Opus. Everything to do with editing the information. And uh, why is it one of the last parts that we are uh, still uh, needing to do? Well, because it's a little bit of a challenge. It's a little bit of an extra challenge as compared to Radar, even where you could edit a lot of things. Because the editing tools in Radar Opus, they must be designed uh, for editing the information of any type, any type of homeopathic information, you see? And so we must be able to connect in any direction. Like in Radar, you could add a text of the Materia Medica in the repertory, which means you connect the repertory to the Materia Medica. When you will be able to do the same in Radar Opus, your connection will be in two ways. It will not only be in the repertory that you can see the Materia Medica text, eh? as Krishna is pointing out. Uh, uh, wait a minute. You will not only be able to see the Materia Medica text in the repertory, like I will show you here. Uh, Voilà. Eh? In the repertory, abdomen falling down, intestines, etc. I see in the repertory the Materia Medica text. You see what I mean? But I will also, from the Materia Medica, have a link to the repertory. In the Materia Medica, I will be able to see to which rubric this text has been linked. And even with the patient file, we will make connections with the repertory and with the Materia Medica. So this is why we apologize a little bit, not too hard, eh? but a little bit that this is not yet ready because this is really, again, like a completely new idea where we will be able to link information in all directions. And that's one reason why it isn't ready yet. It's a little bit of a challenge, but we will do it and in a very uh, fascinating way. Okay? Okay, that's good. I have more questions. Yes. Um, so this is from Serdar. Uh, Radar had several purchasing options with different contents. Is that so with Radar Opus, several packaging, several pricing? Also, earlier introductions, portability was mentioned. What are the choices for running Radar Opus on tablets, mobiles, etc.? Yes, yes, yes. We, indeed, that's an interesting question because it allows me again to uh, explain something very fascinating about our new approach. Uh, the general reply is yes, of course you will be able to buy Radar Opus like uh, minimum, with a minimum number of documents, more documents a little bit more expensive, full-blown, all languages, etc. The most expensive with all modules, yes. Eh? But, in addition, in addition, you will be able to uh, to uh, show, uh, no, how shall I say? Uh, let let me let me show you very precisely what I like to say here. In the table of contents of the repertories, you see the repertories here. You see this little phrase: "Inaccessible documents." Do you see that? Inaccessible documents. Now, for the moment, as an apology to all our lovely users that and because we have a delay, everybody has access to everything. And of course, at a certain time, we will need to change that. But it will mean that some people who bought a smaller module, a smaller set of documents, they will have some inaccessible documents. You see that? And when these people, when they do a search, like brother, they may find brother, or let's say brother, uh, brother uh, sleeping. Okay, 
they may find that there is no reply in the documents to which they have access. But the table of documents will then display that there is a search result in the documents to which they don't have access. So brother sleeping, no access, no result in your documents. But here you will find that brother sleeping has a result in the documents to which you don't have access. And that may be, for example, that this in the, what shall I say, in the repertory of uh, Guernsey, okay? At that time, you will have the possibility to just right-click and to decide on the spot to buy that additional repertory because it's now the fifth time that you did a search and you saw that the information for which you are looking is present in Guernsey and because you didn't buy it, you don't have that information but you'll be able to, to create that access immediately with a payment, a little payment for one document only will not be a lot, eh? but you will be having the flexibility to uh, decide yourself on the spot as using the program to increase, to get additional repertories, additional materia medica and so on. Okay? And what was the, set? the last part of the question was not about uh, packages, but was about uh, something else. Oh, tablets and mobile. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, the reply is yes. You know that this program, Radar Opus Now, is fully PC-native, Mac-native. It runs on the two uh, platforms. Uh, the next version, 135, which is already in test, as you may see here. You see 135. I'm running Build 5, so this is the fifth version of 135 will also address the mountain lion issues we have and so the program is fully compatible PC and Macintosh and will also be released on all the other platforms from the smartphones unto the iPad. We are working on that and we'll have synchronizations in between them so that you can use your PC or your desktop in the office and they take your tablet to the patient in the house and synchronize everything. So this is the idea, yes. Okay, I have quite a few more questions. Um, well, let's one take first. one more maybe, one more. Then the maybe. others one we will keep for a second session. Okay. Uh, well, we'll finish off Jeff's question then. He okay, gave me, go ahead. That wasn't what he wanted to know. So. Uh, He's saying, for example, if we do a search for fear of dogs, yes. in which, which remedies uh, and books is it found all in one view? So he's asking a search for fear. Okay. So, of course, I go to the search icon, here, fear of dogs. And what was the rest of the question? Phil? So he's asking to look for fear of dogs and then... Yeah, so to see all the information in books and repertories, all in one. Yeah, that's all the same. So if, if he says, I want to see fear of books everywhere, I search in all documents here, and I search at the same time repertory and materia medica, all in one go, and later you'll be able to search in your patient files as well. Okay? So it's just the same. This is the search area. You see here are the repertories, which contains fear of dogs, and then all the materia medicas are listed here, which contain uh, fear of dogs, the provings, whatever you like. So it's the same reply as the other question. It's in the search tab, which you access from this icon. You get to this screen, you type the words, and you say search all documents. Okay? So, uh, before I leave you, I will now launch a uh, poll that I have created and then I, uh, wait, uh, where is it? Yes, launch the poll that I have created. You will see that the screen appears on your computer where you'll be asked which version you are using. We'd like to have this information from as many of you as possible, so please just click on the uh, on the reply as you go out so we have some idea how many people are updated. 
I must ask you very much, please get in touch with your representative to get the most uh, current version. Uh, between each version, 132, 133, 134, even the 135, which is coming sometime in November, a lot of work has been done. We've been looking at all your remarks. We've been resolving technical issues uh, between 134 and 135. A lot of improvement in speed of the program again. So please be updated so you can use uh, for free, in fact, the uh, latest work that we are doing for you. So uh, as you are now uh, leaving us here, I thank you very much. We may do another webinar to address a few additional questions and I, I have a few more things to say on how to use the program and on the tools that will help you, uh, some essential tools that I would like to discuss with you some next time. And uh, we will be sending you an email as before uh, to, uh, to announce you when that will happen, but probably as well on a Thursday, more or less the same time, uh, which then will be uh, a possibility for the same people. So I thank you very much. You can now leave the webinar and fill out the reply to the question. We will stay here and wait until you have done so. Thank you very much. Phil, you want to say anything else? No, that, that looks good. Um, I think uh, look forward to the next one. Yes. All right. So we'll just wait a little bit while people are logging off. Okay, Phil? Mm -hmm. So I see about half of the people are using 134. That's already not too bad. Do, do you, are these, these questions that people ask, do they save somewhere? Or yes, the there? questions are saved in a file. I'm going to send it to you and ask you to process it. Uh, someone is asking, will we get the link for the recording? Yes, that will be posted on the radaropus.com website. Or, of course, you can ask your representative who will tell you uh, where it can be found and possibly the representative will uh, post the link on his her website as well. So still people logging off. So the webinar is finished. I will not close it unless you have left. So it is now time to leave my dear people. I will stop the recording now.